Welcome to Foundation After Midnight, the free, though thoroughly encrypted, Foundation radio show broadcasting to all the still secure facilities around the globe. We're bending time and space and clearance levels to bring you all the newest updates from around the Foundation. Has it been dark where you're at for over 48 hours? Have no fear, it's for sure midnight here in our emergency bunker. Even if it is several miles underground, below sea level. But, I'm your host, DJ Skip, and you're listening to 93.3 FAM Radio. And I am... Uh, I am not really sure it's worth playing the memetic sound agent, as there aren't that many of us left, and, well... Well, proper clearance level be damned. So, um... Anyway, here's just to fill in the space. In memory of the late Professor Bjornsson, we're going to play his 6.30 production. Look at this, Skip. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think the containment's complete? Wouldn't you think we're the site? The site that holds everything? Look at this trove, monsters untold. How many wonders can one sector hold? Looking around here, you'd think. Sure, it holds everything. There are Ketters and Euclids aplenty. There are Spheroids and X-Men galore. You want little misters? We've got twenty. But who's cool? Not us yet. There's much more. We want to know where the GOIs are. We want to see, want to see them scrambling. Rushing around the world, Bixby and coming. Oh, Clef. Shooting things up don't hold too much back. Cells are required for testing, exploring, poking around with a... What's this thing again? Me. 920 walks, 96 runs. The sun launcher shoots things into the sun. Can't leave things be, wandering free, out in the world. Such a catchy song. Hope it doesn't get stuck in your head all day. Though, if it did, it might be more pleasant than that dreaded ticking sound that many have reported in about. So, uh, unfortunately, it seems the Foundation Space Program has failed completely. Most, if not all, of the skips we launched into the sun have continued their novelist effects or have mutated into even greater threats. <clears throat> At the top of our important news today, Head Foundation Space Program researchers have announced that all personnel should move to the lower levels of their assigned sites and enter the provided XK-level superstructures. Upon evacuating your site, please be sure to turn off all lights, empty out break room fridges, lock down all cells, and terminate all unassigned D-class personnel. There are registered Z5 flares in mass as the last goodbye from our yellow sun heading towards the planet at record speeds. A countdown clock has been started at 11 minutes. We have 11 minutes before waves of pictometer x-rays splash over the Earth. More than 10 times that of the great solar storm of 1859, so we'll get one last flash of sun, and then darkness forever. So, I'd tell you to go outside, but that'd probably be too dangerous. We will continue as normal from here for as long as possible, so please stay tuned as you evacuate to your shelter. And now, we would like to take a moment and remember all of those brave men and women who have passed away in the line of duty this week. The following are the names of Foundation personnel we lost to recent events. These brave men and women gave their lives, sometimes repeatedly, for the preservation of humankind and the world as we know it. They are remembered here as best as we can, in no particular order. Director Alicia Winters Dr. Athena Gray Subdirector Idoa Azaki Researcher Lucy Chang Dr. Todd King Samuel Brau Assistant Director Harold Schwarz Dr. West Roth 
Agent Elliot McNamara, Phil Kowalski, Dr. Jacques Abasolo, Edward Hitchington, Dr. Ferdinand Zanders, Researcher Sarah Lopez, Agent Naomi Rhodes, Communication Officer Annette B. Williams, Agent Jaron Mode, Dr. Pleasance Ludwig, Security Chief Dwight Strahan, Professor Anders Bjornsson, Dr. Wesley Johnson, Nurse Tyler Faber, Junior Researchers Chris Pinkus, Ryan Pinkus, and Scott Pinkus, Dr. Adam F. Rutherford, Dr. Adam R. Rutherford, Francis Hart, Professor Astrid, Jane McAllister, Dr. James Campbell, Intern Patel Falls, Dr. Rosalie, Assistant Researcher Dr. Lyons, Container Specialist Thompson, Dr. Trax, Intern Cinder Wilkerstrand, Security Personnel Gordon Nunez, Site Director Roger Hawkins, Agent Michael Chard, Dr. Mason Mill, Dr. Adam, Dr. Jim Hoopie, Joe Olson, Intern James Bean Squad, Second Deputy Researcher Jacobs, Researcher Dr. Assistant Junior Researcher Lisa Walsh, Private Deputy Research, Intern Management Resources Director Marshall Randall Fender, Researcher Director Randall Fender, Zoe Cooper, Intern Director Randall Fender, Intern Director Randall Fender, Intern Director Randall Fender, Intern Director Randall Fender, Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we had to speed things up a bit during that as we read off the names, so, uh, our, um, utmost apologies about that. A recent change in policy has surviving staff grumbling. Administration has declared they will no longer be accepting containment procedures written in over 60% blood. A representative stated, We are doing this for the health and safety of the administration department and its personnel. No word yet on if field notes covered in blood, but still legible, will be allowed or not. <laughs> we would like to remind personnel you should check for rations in your bunker before resorting to cannibalism. Most sites are equipped to last a full year or more of total isolation from the outside world. However, if you do end up resorting to cannibalism, please refer to your cannibalism and you kit. Also, be sure to use the provided microwaves before starting fires using discarded remnants of civilized society. The open flames will set off smoke detectors and bunker fire alarms, and I don't think I need to remind anyone how loud those can be. Please respect those in your neighboring bunkers, and keep your shouting and chanting to a reasonable noise level. A bit of information my Foundation-provided psychologist allowed me to share. SCP-990 appeared to me in a dream last night. Our talk was short, but the mysterious man and I discussed the current events going on in the real world. To most of my questions, he simply responded with exasperated sighs, I told them, or I tried to warn you all, but no, or on a few occasions, called it. He then told me goodbye and good luck, and that this would be the last time he'd be visiting us at the Foundation. When I asked him what he meant by that, he said it didn't really matter. When I asked him what he meant by that, he laughed and said something about always asking questions, but always being afraid of the answers. Something. The details are fuzzy. I then tried to ask him to at least tell us who he really was in the real world, but I couldn't hear him over a growing roar that turned out to be my alarm going off next to my bed. I immediately jumped out of bed and tried to write down as much as I could of the dream so I could share it with all the lovely remaining personnel still listening to FAM radio. It's not much, but I guess it's as good as a goodbye as we'll likely get from him. I guess if he's out there in the real world in one form or another, thank you for watching out for us. Sorry if we never really listened or never figured things out in time. <clears throat> well, now it's time for Foundation Personnel. Uh, we try to feature our favorite melodies composed by those of our very own Foundation. This week it's, well, I had a bit of a shortage of personnel free to make music, so this week's featured music comes from a D-class personnel named Liriel. You're listening to FAM Radio at 93.3, and this is The End Is Nigh. Music. They've got some work for you. Please step out of the cell. Jess, follow me. We're authorized to kill any disobedient test subjects, so don't try anything stupid. I once lived my life as a deedless personnel, and I can assure you it was living out. Supernatural objects and creatures were contained, and inmates used to test their strain. I was there when it happened, when it escaped. The SCP-173 and bitch was its name It's lonely and it will try to hug you all the time But since it's made of stone it will break your fucking spine Oh, on certain day those creatures broke free 
Trying to kill everyone on sight, including me. Soon we'll be over. Try to survive, don't wait and just die. Soon you'll be a soldier. Be brave and don't cry and fight for your life. Cause the end is nigh. Bodies lying everywhere and some come back to life. Reason for that is the grass of 049 Don't believe what he says, he won't let you survive He might be Dr. Death, but at least he is polite There's a cry when you hear it, please avert your eyes Else this drama queen might be your demise 096 is tall, and has a face filled with disgust Run away, or else he's the thing you'd see at last Oh, on certain day those creatures broke free Trying to kill everyone on sight, including me Soon it'll be over Try to survive, don't wait and just die See a naked man crawling through the walls Don't approach him, except you got the balls You recognize him by his breath and his creepy grin He will trap you in his prison if you touch his skin One big monstrosity I haven't encountered yet Is a reptile-like creature supposed to be undead Its roar can shake the earth and it quickly changes size if he was Godzilla as a zombie, I wouldn't be surprised Oh, on a certain day those creatures broke free Trying to kill everyone on sight, including me So we'll be over Trying to survive, don't wait and just die So you'll be a soldier Be ready to cry and fight for your life You know too much to let them get you. You're coming with us. Oh, oh, that's it? Okay. Remember, if you would like your song featured on our show, email us at scp93.famradio at gmail.com. And now, back to the news. Next week... Morning. Uh, Morning. Next... Next week... Damn it. Next we would... One second. Okay. There we go. So, uh... As I was saying... Uh... What was I saying again? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Here's something. Uh, we've had a number of researchers... We've had a number of researchers call in asking about updates on skips that were launched into the sun back when the Foundation space program sounded like a good idea. Normally, that information would be classified, or at the least uh, not publicly released within the Foundation. But, since things are, uh, well, pretty much shot to... Well, since it looks like everything is going out the window, let's see what some of our friends are up to. Uh, the most popular skips were SCP-173 and SCP-096, both of which we are happy to inform you successfully went off into the sun without a hitch. Or, relatively speaking, without a hitch. 096 is either dead or forever hidden behind the intense light of the sun, according to our top theorist. 173, when hurled at the sun, whose surface heat, I may remind you, keeps metal in a gaseous form, dissolved. Seems like the killer rock, unlike the softball team with its namesake, could not withstand the heat. Speaking of hotline call-ins, I see we have a message. Glad to see at least some of the site out there is still active in receiving us. Well, uh, usually... One of my assistants take those, but since the site-wide evacuation locked down, it's just me and the answering machine today. Let's see, how do we... 
Ah, okay, let's see who called us. Hi, this is Research Assistant Hadley of Site 22. Just want to say, uh, me and my buds are real big fans of the show, and uh, we listen to it every time it's on, and it's great when we're analyzing. Um, this is just one problem. Um, if you could possibly bring this to attention, uh, our radios have started screaming during the middle of your broadcast. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's like an intentional joke that's running over there, but you know, it's a little unsettling, especially when um, you know we're we're dealing with some highly corrosive and potentially deadly material, and we're just jolted by these screams. So, yeah, can you? Please help me figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah? Yeah. Well, oh, one second. Uh, yeah? Oh, Krishna, what are you talking about? Oh, sorry. I, I gotta go. The radio's bleeding. Oh! Um, well, we don't usually take maintenance calls, but we'll see about sending someone down for that. Uh, remember, you can always call in to our radio hotline at 512-937-2346. Now, uh, that's um, 512-937-2346. Or you can leave us a message, and we'll see if we can get back to you. Maybe. Now, um, um let's see, let's see. I have to have something here. Uh, oh! Aha! Here's some foundation poetry from actual personnel. Let's give this a read. Uh, huh, here we go. XK by very real researcher Ruitz. You need to secure your database, you idiots. Do champ. <clears throat> we took the damn thing and wiped the blood and shit and piss and tears from its face. Nothing was beneath. Light shone through the cracks. Reality itself bent to the wills of madmen. Only words remain. Sliced through severed stones. Redundancies enough to keep back a hidden king. Trees in the forest. Deep uncertainty. Undirected hatred, fear, and loathing shapes it all. And remains unshaped. Fresh porphyria. Dry and wet and old and new and everything in between, solemnly inept. A few swift stabbings, ten thousand steel doors broken down to scraps of concepts, moderately gnawed. Knowledge lies in parts, puzzles upon ciphers upon riddles open doors, revolving in place. Eternity now, all clocks and time compressed to an instant variance. Cannot change again. Warning personnel. Pending XK class end of the world scenario. Thank you and farewell. Ahem. <clears throat> that was, uh, not nearly as cheerful as I was expecting, but, uh, g good on them for, uh, expressing themselves with such words. Um... <sighs> it seems the official word has just come down. The Temporal Anomaly Research, Defense, and Integration Station has been activated. A chain reaction has begun, set in motion by the O5 Council members that will launch us through time and space, back to a point before the Foundation Space Program was put into effect. All personnel are to stand by as we complete the reality-wide jump. You may experience some discomfort or nausea from the dimensional shift, so be advised. We are suggesting turning off all cellular devices and electronics as they may interfere with the jump. It is suggested that you try to write down as much as possible during this time using whatever material that you have on whatever surfaces you can. We do not know how much will survive the reset, but hey, what have we got to lose? The walls are beginning to fade now. They're, uh, they're still there, but everything can be seen through. If 
that makes sense. Not that much of this does, but now things are slowly becoming transparent. My coffee cup just disappeared out of my hand. I can see through my control sets before me, and it's likely they are still there, but no longer visible. Things are becoming... softer. I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it past that. Well, uh... The skin of my hand is just now faded, though I can still feel it, though faintly. I can see my muscles and bones underneath. My chair is just faded out completely, and though I was still sitting in it, I can't help but get up out of it. There's just not much left around me anymore, but I can still somewhat feel things. Uh, there was a darkness, but even that is now fading to white. Hoping you're all okay, and we might make all this together. You have been listening to Foundation After Midnight Radio, Episode 3, The End is Night. FAM Radio is written by Kyle Stover and Eric Stover. Produced by Toad King Studios. DJ Skip is voiced by Kyle Stover. Content based off the SCP Foundation and released under the Creative Commons 3.0 license. Where possible, inspiring works and authors credited in the space below provided with links. The feature music was The End Is Nigh by Liriel from Games in Time. They can be found on their YouTube channel, Games in Time. Guest voices for this episode were provided by Liriel and Paper Airship. You can email FAM Radio at scp93.famradio at gmail.com or call the radio hotline at 512-93-RADIO. To support FAM Radio, read more in the description. Stay tuned for more Foundation After Midnight Radio.